Acid-base titrations are the most important method for determination of various pharmaceutical compounds, of various industrial compounds suitable for acid or base reactions. They are simple, they are inexpensive, and uh, there are several other approaches that are special for acid base. One of the most important of them is Kjeldal process. Or what is this? If you put an organic compound containing carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen atoms and burn it, all carbon will go to carbon dioxide. All hydrogen will become water, same with oxygen. All nitrogen will become N2, nitrogen gas. And of course, all of these compounds are volatile, so they'll disappear. Very interesting reaction occurs in concentrated sulfuric acid in presence of sodium or better potassium sulfates. At these conditions, you can make temperature of your sulfuric acid potassium sulfate mix higher than 300 degrees Celsius. All nitrogen in this hellish mixture will go 100% to ammonium ion, not to nitrogen as we may expect, but to ammonium ion. This reaction will go easier if you'll add mercury or copper salts or traces of selenium. The process was developed by Johann Kjeldal in 1876 and it's still known as Kjeldal digestion. This is one of the most important methods for determining nitrogen in all grains, in most of pharmaceuticals, in most of foodstuff, including milk, chocolate, whatever protein containing compound you can imagine. Uh, the flask for this digestion is known as Keldal flask. It has very long neck and of course it can survive temperature well. After this digestion we need to remove nitrogen. It is in form of ammonia so we gently dilute our sulfuric acid with water, then again cool it down, then add excess of sodium hydroxide, which neutralizes all sulfuric acid and makes solution alkaline. Ammonia becomes NH3 ammonia, which is gas at elevated temperature. So, the gas is coming through a system of condensers. We do not want our hellish mixture to come in here. And we want to remove traces of possible sodium hydroxide from air. And we collect NH3 by HCl or boric acid. The reaction in both cases will be NH3 plus H plus making ammonium again. If HCl, excess of H plus can be titrated with sodium hydroxide. If boric acid, uh, from boric acid NH3 makes borate ion, that can be directly titrated with H plus to make very weak boric acid again and H plus 
In this case, we are using metal red as indicator. It, of course, can be done with pH sensor. These days, uh, in industry, they mostly use semi-automatic systems like that. You see the unit for titration and the unit for distillation here, or even units with multiple samples, so you can digest dozens of samples simultaneously using robotic systems. Thousands, tens of thousands such titrations are done all around the world every day. Two more examples of uh, interesting uses of uh, acid-based titration. What to do if your acid is too weak to titrate with sodium hydroxide? You can chemically modify it. This is an example. Ammonium is too weak acid to be titrated directly, but ammonium can react with formaldehyde molecule to make hexamethylene tetramine, this assembly, and water. Each ammonium makes one hydrogen ion. Well, one hydrogen will sit at one of nitrogens here, but it's very weak acid. So, all the composition can be easily titrated with sodium hydroxide using phenolphthalein as indicator or with pH sensor. 1NH4 makes 1H+. Different approach to the same problem. Determination of boric acid. Again, boric acid is too weak to be titrated directly. But boric acid, H3BO3, reacts with glycerol or any compound with neighboring OH groups, making a complex anion. So there is minus here. And releasing H plus ion. The whole structure of this assembly can be drawn like this. Addition of glycerol or beta manitol results in formation of complex acid, which easily titrates with sodium hydroxide. Problem solved. <laughs>